So you've been doing left, you said, three years. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Okay, actually, about three and a half. Nice. Yeah, I try not, I try and ask two questions typically anywhere I go, but I like taking lifts sometimes because I'm a Christian, so I like to ask two questions. Do you mind if I ask you the two questions? I like, yeah. Okay, perfect. So like, like I said, I'm a Christian. I like to try to ask everybody about going to heaven. So do you, do you know for sure if you'll be in heaven when you die? It's a deep question, huh? I accept that Jesus Christ is my personal savior when I was 18 years old in Thailand. Okay. Okay. Right, right. Well, you did say Jesus, so that's good. So, so what scripture? If you don't mind me asking, why should why should God let you in? Because you said you accepted Him, so that's kind of my second question. Why should God let you into heaven? Uh, you said accepting Him. What what scripture is based on that one? What do you well, go? What do you go two. by? Kind of strike home. One is uh, I think it's Romans ten nine. Okay. <clears throat> I actually got my King James Bible pulled up, so I'm going to go there. But I think uh, I know where you're going. So uh, Romans 10, 9, right? That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart, that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So it goes, yeah. So that's definitely a good one. It goes on. It said, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. So com- definitely confession is made with the mouth, but God looks on the heart, right? So uh, 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But it says, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And it goes on to say how the preacher must be sent. So that's what, you know, that's what I'll be, you know, that's what I'm sent to preach everywhere I try to go that, Jesus went into his own. Cause did you know that part? That he went into his own people and they received him not? Yeah. Yeah, he went to the Jews and they killed him on the cross. And that's that's why he went to the cross to pay for the sins of the whole world and they buried him. So this is the part of full gospel. People like to leave a lot of stuff out. They buried him, but he rose on the third day and he was seen alive because he had many witnesses that he shown himself to after he rose. So <clears throat> and he told uh people on earth before he went to the cross that this temple we tear down, I will raise it up in three days. And they understood not that he spoke of the temple of his body. So he claimed to raise himself. So he said, I came in my father's name and they received me not. And he came in the name of Jesus. So he can't, he claimed to be God almighty. So do you believe that as well? That he's God, the father, he's God almighty. Yes. Amen. So that's the full gospel. Amen. So that's what you must believe. And I, you know, and that's what I like to preach. Um, there's actually no scripture that says, except so I just try to live by every word, right? Because I don't want to get it wrong and be off. You know, the King James Bible, I believe, has every word of God. And you'll see little errors like that in other books as well. So, again, that's what I try to preach. John three sixteen. It, it goes with that, too. Uh, let me actually pull it. Actually, uh, I'm going to go to John one twelve real quick just to kind of show you more of that. John one twelve. it says, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And what's the name? Jesus. Amen. So that's so that's how you go to heaven. I just want you to I just want you to know for sure because it says uh, that we should have that confidence in knowing that we're going to heaven. So again, we're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise according to Ephesians 1:13. It says, In whom we all in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. See, that's what we're saved by, is that gospel. In whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession until the praise of his glory. So, yeah, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So that's why. Hey, that's what I'm saying. Hey, amen. It sounds like you believe that gospel. Do you believe you need to repent in order to in order to be saved? Do you believe that? Well, I accepted Christ over 50 years ago. So You accepted him or do you believe? I accepted the fact that Jesus Christ is my Savior. 
Okay, because he's because God, you're he's the savior of the world, but we got to receive that gift, right? Right. So that's why, according to John one twelve, it says, "But as many as received him, because it's not really accept. You got to receive the gift, right?" So that's what I'm saying. Like um, acceptance is like, like you see the cop, like we just went through the little, because uh, the lights is out back here and the cops started standing there directing traffic, right? We have to accept that fact, right? Yeah. It's not that we have to believe because we see them in front of us. We're just accepting the fact that they're stopping traffic. We have to wait. Now we can go left. That's acceptance right there. Okay. okay? So that's not belief. That's why I'm saying go by every word of God. And I just want to make sure you that you know for sure. Oh, I don't. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so, and all you got to do is just change that word. That's it. It's believe. Right. From accept to believe, because there's because there's not there's not one word that correlates with with salvation or even the gospel in the scripture at all. If you look and if you look, you won't you won't find it. The, the exact word actually, if you search the word accept, it comes up. I can actually search it now. All right. The word accept comes up. It's a c c e p t, and I'm gonna search the New Testament because that's where Jesus. Comes on the scene, right? Comes down. Right. Except comes up one time in the New Testament. In the New Testament, it really? co- yes, where? Where? Uh, Acts twenty four three. It says we accept it always, and in all places, most noble Felix with all thankfulness. So it's talking about Felix. It's nothing to do with G. And we can put it in context. I can go to verse one. Yeah, yeah. It's talking about Paul, and after five days, Ananias. The high priest descended with the elders and with a certain uh, orator named Tertullus, who informed the governor against Paul. You're right. So, and that's verse one, verse three. That's where the word "accept" comes up. So again, let me let me even search. Let me put "ed" on it. Accepted, right? Because people say I accepted Christ, right? Or acceptance. Okay, I'll search. I'll search. I'll, I'll look all of them. So I'll search. I'll search accepted, right? Nine verses found. Ten matches. For the word accepted, right? Okay. And he said, verily I say unto you, no prophet is accepted in our own country. You see that? I gave an example of the law. Do you accept the law or not? Like, that's why people break the law. Like, it's more or less that you accept. You know, it's, it, again, that's with the preference of acceptance or acceptance. So let me go on. Acts 10, 35. But in every nation he feared him and work of righteousness is accepted with him. So let's look in context. We can go back a couple verses. Him God raised up the third day. Let me see. Accepted. And the word which God sent unto the child, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. The word I say ye know, which published throughout all Judea and became from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of devil of the devil for God was with him and we are witnesses of all things which he do which I'm sorry which he did both in the land of the Jews and a, and a Jerusalem whom they slew and hung on a tree him God raised up the third day and shewed him openly not to all people but unto witnesses chosen before God even to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead and he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained to God to be the judge of the quick and the dead to him give all the prophets witness that through him I'm sorry that through his name whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins so again and that was talking that was to the Jews because John the Baptist preached the baptism of repentance to all the people of Judea which were Jews but he, but according to Acts 13, he fulfilled his course. He what? He fulfilled his course. John, John the Baptist fulfilled his course. So that gospel, which was the baptism of repentance, was only preached to the Jews, and that's why they're dealing with Jews right here. But at the end of the day, my point was that believe is what we must do, not accept. And you even see accept used in this chapter, but it has nothing to do with salvation. That's why in 43, I just read the whole thing almost right. 
And to him, give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive. Because believe is received. That's what I'm, that's what I'm trying to tell you. According to John, let me go back to it. So John 1, 12, right? But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So that's that's all I'm showing you in scripture that that word, every word of God matters. What is it? Luke 4 and 4. It says, because this is look, let me read Luke 4, verse 3. And the devil said unto him, it's talking to Jesus, if thou be the son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written. See, even Jesus went by the written word. Look, because he is the word, right? John 1 and 1. The word was with God, the word was God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. So he is the word. That's why he went by the written word. It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. That's all I'm telling you. So you must believe on him. And that's how you know for sure. So um, so is that is that is that you, you can you can agree with that based on the scripture? Because accept it, accept it and believe is, is, is totally separate. Even in John. Believe comes up so many times, like over 80 times in the book of John. But repentance comes up zero times. Acceptance comes up, or accept it comes up zero times. Let me see, acceptance. Let me take that A out. So A-C-C-E-P-T-A-N-C-E. -E. Acceptance comes up zero times. Yeah. And, oh, you, I can't show you, but I don't want to disrespect that. Maybe I'll send you the link. I, I'm recording my screen, just the screen activity. Yeah, so I'm just I'm just showing you, like in scripture, acceptance or accepted has nothing to do with salvation. For indeed, he accepted the exhortation, but being more forward of his own accord, he went unto you. So that's it. That's all I'm showing you there. So uh, do you believe you can lose your salvation? Do you believe that you're eternally sealed until the day of redemption? Do you believe there's anything you can do to make you lose your salvation? Amen. And that's according to scripture. That's all I that's all I want to know. That's a, that's amen. I agree with that. Um do you believe there's any other names that say like Jeshua, like Yeshua, Joshua? You believe in any of those names? Well, Jesus is a derivative of Joshua. Well, think about it. Jesus said, I came in my father's name, right? What name did he come in? Well, he, Jesus, right? That's the name he came in. He said, I came in my father's name. So First John 5, 7, for there are three that bear record in heaven, the father, the word, the Holy Ghost. These three are one. So again, Jesus is from heaven. And John, so the word was with God. The word was God. The word was made flesh. Because God has no beginning, no ending. So made flesh can't kill flesh. You can't kill spirit, rather. God is spirit. So that's why he put on flesh and he said, I will raise it up. So he's God Almighty. So that's the first thing there. In terms of the name, the angel came down. Then uh, the angel came to Joseph and, and or and to Mary and said the name would be Jesus. So... If you look at, um, what's the one scripture? He said, he said, uh, I came in my father's name and ye received me not. But him, but he that come in his own name, him ye will receive. You remember that verse? Yeah. So, this name Joshua, if you look um, at Hebrews 4 and 8. Hebrews 4 and 8 in the King James, it says, For if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? Right? It says Jesus in the King James. You can I can you could fact check any other book, the new King James, the, the New Living Translation, the NIV, any other book. They change many other verses and take things out, but that one in particular, Hebrews 4 and 8, it'll say for Joshua. So they purposely changed the name. Devil, the devil came along and, and twisted that name. But if you 
code the Bible 666 because then he said the mark of the beast. That's going to be the that's going to be the number of his name. 666. Right. So we've been given the hint the entire time. And why are people trying to receive the name Jesus? If you talk to a regular church building goer, because I, I don't go to a church building because that's really a business. The, the believers is a church. And that's why I just preach like this. I fellowship, you know, anywhere I am in my home. That's really where the church meet. But, you know, you can fellowship anywhere, honestly. But, yeah, the bit those buildings are actually, they're preaching acceptance versus belief. They're preaching repentance, actually. They're preaching other false narratives, and they're really wanting money and things like that. But that's a whole other story. Um, and they'll also believe in that name Yeshua or Jesus or, or Joshua, rather. They'll believe that name. So if you look at 666, because Jesus said they'll receive him that came in his own name. Because Jesus is the son of, he's the son of God. He has a father, right? And that's the flesh, because, you know, there's one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. So if you look at 666 in the Bible, in the Old Testament, that's the sixth book, the sixth chapter and the sixth verse. Which is what? That's the book of Joshua. Uh, six chapters, six verse. And then the first six words, it says, and Joshua, the son of Nun. So that's the only actual reference to Joshua in the King James book. It has nothing to do with Jesus. That's the only mention. Joshua, the son of Nun. Didn't Jesus say, him that come in his own name, him ye will receive? So Joshua, the son of Nun, there is no man in the, in the, in the book King James named Nun. You can't find him. You can't find no character named Nun. So again, who is this Joshua then? That's why it says, and Joshua, the son of Nun. Hmm, that's like a mystery. And then Joshua actually means Yeshua. Joshua is English word for Yeshua. Yeshua is actually used in the King James Bible over 30 times. Again, it's J-E-S-U, I'm sorry, it's J-E-S-H-U-A. That's how you spell Yeshua. Or, you know, they say that J is silent. It's really, it's, it's Yeshua, quote unquote, but it's J E S U. A, if you search it in the Old Testament, it's 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 a match of 30 verses. What it's, it's 30, it comes up 30 times. The word just the word Yeshua. And let me do this. Yeshua, the son of Nun. And you can spell it N-U-N, uh, the son of Nun. That's Nehemiah 8:17. And all the congregation of them that were come again out of the captivity made booths and sat under the booths for since the days of Jesh of Yeshua, the son of Nun. You see that? It's the same person. So again, Joshua 6, 6, verse 6, and Joshua, the son of Nun. Joshua, Oshea, Yeshua, it's the same, it's the same person. He had multiple names. So, again, that's the narrative and the lie that people are using in other books. You can fact check it. Hebrews 4 and 8, they changed the name to Joshua. So they're trying to make people believe that Jesus went by Joshua. And really, at the Tower of Babel, when the land was of one language, that's when God decided to confuse the languages because they were trying to build a temple to reach the heavens. He said, no, he confused the languages. English has been around since then. But the Old Testament was written in Hebrew. The New Testament was written in Greek. So why? And then that's a good point, too. Why are they trying to give Jesus a Hebrew name, quote unquote, what they say is Yeshua is Hebrew, right? right. The New Testament was written in Greek. Josh, Jesus doesn't come up until Matthew 1, 21, which was written in Greek. So when, shouldn't it be a Greek name if that was the case? So, again, that's that's all I'm here to share is one name according to. And then that's the last thing according to Scripture. You can look at Acts 4. 10, it says, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucify, whom God raised from the dead, even by him, though this man stand here before you hold, this is a stone which was set a knot of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name given under heaven among men whereby we must be saved. <laughs> so there's no other name given under heaven. You can be in Africa. <laughs> you can be in New Zealand. You're under heaven. It's one name. So that's all I'm here to preach, man.
So I pray you, you know, receive that message and, you know, pick up the King James Bible, too, and study it, man. Starting a new, start new Testament, which, you know, Paul was separated unto the gospel of God in Romans 1. So that's our apostle. Uh, and he talks about that in Galatians as well. Paul says he's preaching to the uncircumcision, how the gospel of dispensation was given to the uh, to Peter. Right. Because he was preaching to the circumcised, which they were under the law. But once you believe Jesus fulfilled the law and we believe and receive that 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 righteousness. So, yeah, man, that's according to scripture. And uh, I pray you believe that. That's share that message, too.